I've got no doubt that part of what needs to happen there going forward is that their little number seven, who's out uh, with a few issues at the moment, <coughs> needs to get his game back to peak form. So Ash Taylor, if you're up there and you had the chance to work with him, how, how would you go about helping him rebuild his game? Yeah, the word you think about when you talk about Ash Taylor is the word potential. Now, I don't like that word being branded about anyone because it means you haven't reached the level that people expect you to. So he's obviously coming from a low mark in terms of what everyone else expects. But for me, and this isn't being critical, but you, you need to, when you're advising someone in this situation, you need to you know, be accurate. I think Ash Taylor you know, works from the top of his game first in terms of setting up tries, scoring tries and, and all that kind of stuff. For a halfback that's going to get picked regularly, you've got to start from the bottom. You need to get your defensive game in order, you need to get an accurate, effective kicking game and then start looking at your passing game and your running game and things like that. So for me, if I was advising Ash Taylor, I'd be going, get back to the physicality of the game. When you do the physical stuff in terms of putting your head in some wrong spots defensively, all of a sudden you want the brave run. You want to take guys on because you're feeling the contest. So, yeah, I, I think for me, anyone who asks me for advice and um, you want to know about halfback play, it starts with your defence. Get that nice and strong and accurate. Work on your kicking game and then build from there. How long would that take for a player like Taylor to get to that stage where he's playing good football again? Yeah, well, it's taken two steps back to move forward. Um, you know, the, the timing is how much he wants to put into it. You know, for me, it'd be just about continuous repetitions on the training paddock. You know, having you know, Trevor Gilmice is on the Gold Coast, one of the best tackling machines the game's seen. You know, do some repetitions with him. Get him in the wrestling arena. Get him feeling that physical side of the football. So when he's tackling, he then feels when he's got the ball in hand, he can, he can do both. So I'll we'll take you back to the start of your career. If you, you, you're, we're suggesting here that Ash Taylor needs to relearn how to play halfback properly. You actually have to learn because it's been said that you're a manufactured playmaker. <laughs> Bit of a myth, that surely. <laughs> so, right at the genesis of your time as halfback at the Storm, what, I mean, what sort of hours were you pu putting into the various components of your game, and, and, and what things were you doing at training to hone what you needed to, to yeah, get sharp? Yeah, Craig Bellamy told me one thing before 2006. He said, uh, "I'll pick you every week if you make your tackles and kick the ball well." At that stage, I wasn't very good at tackling and I couldn't kick a ball really well. But through the resources that Melbourne Storm provided down in Victoria, there was a you know, few AFL guys that taught me how to kick, so it was an extra 200 balls a week. And then the way that Melbourne Storm work on their tackling, it just naturally occurred that you were doing more defensive efforts than, than attacking prowess. So that was a, uh, a hidden gem for me. I started from that. And then I think then you can add all the strings to your bow then. You can start working because you get confidence. The coach is picking you. You're not up and down with your performances. Then you all of a sudden get confidence from, oh, I can work with my back row here. I can throw a long pass to the centre or I can kick him behind the, the line with a trick play. So those who go straight to the top always fall back a few pegs because they forget about the little things that it takes to be halfback.